Now I wanted to ask you guys about judo. As you know, judo and jiu-jitsu used to be pretty much one. There, there was a time when the guy's stand-up was just as good as their groundwork, then jiu-jitsu got into the Olympics and all the emphasis put on stand-up and the groundwork kind of disappeared in Japan but it was preserved in Brazil. Now a generalization is that jiu-jitsu guys, Brazilian jiu-jitsu guys are great on the ground but not so good standing up. So speaking in a stereotype we've lost some of the stand-up in jiu-jitsu. Do you feel like it's your duty as jiu-jitsu instructors to go back and, and bring the stand-up back into jiu-jitsu or is it okay just to teach pulling guard every time? No, I feel like we have to balance everything, you know. Uh, we are, we are open-minded. Always try to learn everything. I had great training partners since I started. Like good wrestlers, good judo people. Like I had like training partners that were like black belts in judo, and uh, I was always trying to learn techniques, like wrestling techniques and the judo techniques, uh, to make my game like uh, complete. Of course, when we go to the competition, you always have the you always try to bring your opponent to the techniques that you like the best. So sometimes, like if you just watch the competition, uh, you're not able to see my whole game. But uh, the students that are here every day, they can have a better idea what I know, like my whole jiu-jitsu, like knowledge. I feel like we need to balance and teach everything. Like I, I, I'm not like I, I, I'm not just teaching. Uh, bottom or passing the guard. I'm always teaching everything. We teach takedowns here. I, I teach everything that I know. Yeah. Like Jiu Jitsu guys, they will always like better be on the ground, like rolling around. But um, even though like I don't like takedowns a lot, my professor always made us, you know, work some judo, wrestling, you know, because it's part of the game and you have to learn. And nowadays we do the same thing. It's not my favorite part. But I, I do have to teach these students and show them what to do so they are, you know, comfortable in that situation. So that's what Yeah, I mean. and uh, even if it's not our main game for the competition because of the division or because of the, the way we score points in the competition, but uh, I think we need to be able to show the students because uh, we have many different students, body, different body types and uh, people like competitors that fight different divisions like heavyweights and uh, for them can be like their main game. Yeah. You understand? We can't, uh, we can't force all the students to have exactly the same game yeah. that we have. Yeah. I don't like this idea. Yeah. I feel it's bad for us because uh, then uh, it will be hard to find training partners with different games. You understand? I feel like if we teach everything that we know they're gonna build their game with the techniques that they feel comfortable, and then uh, will be better for us to train because then we have different training partners, different games inside yeah, of the sure. academy. I, I think agree. that's a great point because I've seen some teachers where their students' games look very much like the instructors, and I don't think that's a good thing because it, it's almost like inbreeding. Uh, yeah. Whereas when you have a teacher and all their students have very different games, yeah. then that shows that this guy is teaching yeah. a very broad art. Yeah, I, I feel like for the competition, uh, uh, for the competitors, like they always try to use techniques that are working. So like not not just here, but if you go to other academies, you're gonna find people doing the burn bowl. You you can go to an academy, you can go to Alliance, you can go to Grace Baja, you can go to Auto San Diego. Like you're gonna find people trying to use the burn bowl, trying to use the lapel to play guard. It's because these are the techniques that are working now. That I think like. You see people like discovering new techniques from their new variations, and uh, that's what people like. They like what's new, and uh, I feel it's not like because you see our student in, uh, burn, doing the burn bowl in the competition, you're gonna think that we just teach the burn bowl. Like that's a bad mm -hmm. idea. We teach everything. And, uh, sometimes, of course, our students are gonna do the techniques that we uh, we like because they look up to us a lot. But uh, we teach everything here. Hafa, just to go back one moment, you said earlier that uh, you're not a big fan of takedowns. Why is that? Uh, you know, I don't know. I'll, I'm like since the beginning, I'm always asking myself the same question: like, why I don't like takedowns? It's just I feel more comfortable, like, like you know, like on my back, like spinning or in this scramble game. You know, even passing when I'm passing the guard, you can see I like to move fast side to side, but. Um, just like I told you, Hamon always made me work takedowns. 
like in the in the competition, like you guys can see, like I, I try to pull guard first. Sometimes I let the guy pull guard. I don't go for takedowns too much. But uh, you know, since I was 12, 13, I was always like training takedowns. Yeah, but I we, 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 we fought a um, competition in Brazil. I think it was like 2003 or yeah. Yeah, we were. Uh, we are uh, national champion. I'm a Brazilian in nationals champion. In yeah, wrestling. yeah, when we were like set, <laughs> okay. yeah, 17 years old. <laughs> Don't forget that, okay? <laughs> so yeah. your point is, even though you didn't like it, your yeah. your coach made you do it, and that's a exactly. good idea, right? Yeah. Of course, when you see like I'm competing like Pan Ams or Worlds, I'm trying to go for my main game. Yeah. That's why I pull guard, or I let the guy pull guard so I can work on top. But I do feel comfortable if I have to go for a takedown, or if I have to, you know fight standing, you know, that happens in the EDCC, you know, in the finals. Yeah, well, I was going to talk about this, like, he had to use, like, his standing game, like, uh, avoiding all the takedowns, and uh, he beat uh, one of the meows, was it Joan or Paulo in the was at Joel, ADCC? Yeah, yeah he took him down, down with a, a single leg. So, uh, like, even if you don't see all the time, like, when uh, it is needed, like, he's using it. Right. Yeah, you need to be prepared for for the situation, you know. Yeah, and that, that, that was good. Like, I remember uh, Hamon like forcing us to compete in wrestling just like to be more confident with the takedowns. <laughs> yeah. Like, we were, it was good because we were 16 or 17 and uh, in Jiu Jitsu, we were competing already in the adults division in Brazil. And uh, we were fighting people much stronger than mm -hmm. us, of course. When we went to wrestling and uh, we had to compete against people our age, we felt so comfortable. Like we, we, we were much stronger than I was. We might have some pictures wearing the uniform, but we'll never show it to you guys again. <laughs> never. <laughs>